Hi folks, welcome to another Bossy tutorial. Um, what I'm here to show you today is how to set up new recipes in your uh, data set. So we've done a previous video on how to set up products. It's actually quite similar. So I'll just go through how to set up a new recipe. Um, so go into admin, open up your products module, and you'll see your recipes section here. Your recipes are where you set up your cocktails, your coffees, your food items, those sorts of things. Batch recipes is where you set up a batch such as a, a carbonara sauce. You might create a five liter pot of carbonara sauce. So you will create the batch recipe in Bossy here for the five liter carbonara sauce. And you will use that as an ingredient in the recipe. It might be 100 ml ladled out of that batch recipe. So if you are, are creating some batch recipes, you'll need to create those first before you create the recipe itself. So we'll go into recipes. This is a list of all your different recipes. So at the moment here, I've, uh, the major category is beverage, category is coffee, and subcategory is espresso. Well, we will scroll down through this list and we'll try and find a food item so we can set up a food item. There's one there. Um, so we've got a bacon and egg roll. Um, so if we're going to be setting up another breakfast item, so we go by that subcategory and we look for a, uh, an, a, an item that is quite similar to that that we are now setting up. So let's say we're going to create a bacon and avocado roll. Okay, so we would highlight bacon and egg roll, press the copy button, because the copy button is always quicker and easier than pressing new. And this one is going to be just bacon and an avocado. Okay, because we've copied, we don't need to change the, sub, the subcategory. We don't need to change any of the questions as well. And we can just go straight to the ingredients. If you want to add your ingredients in here, so all you have to do is choose your ingredients. So just press new. Uh, at the moment, it defaults to products. You can use a recipe as, a, as a, an ingredient to another recipe. And this is where you would set up your batch recipe as an ingredient to this particular recipe. So we can just go ingredient. Let's say, for example, I'm going to use in this um, just Let's see what items we have in this list. Uh, plain croissant. Okay, I'm going to use one of those plain croissants. Cost me $1.11. Okay, so we added that item to the ingredients. And I'll just add one more ingredient. Let's say I'm going to put a bit of, do not know why, but almond milk. All right, we're going to use 0 0.01 of a bottle of almond milk. Uh, actually, we'll make it 0 0.05, a little bit more of a cost. So it's now six cents. Press OK. All right, we now have three items that are ingredients to this particular dish. The average cost is $2.17 down the bottom, but as you can see now, there is a split between beverage and food. So the beverage item is this almond milk, 2.76% of that $2.17 cost is in beverage and the rest is in food. That means that every time we sell a bacon and avocado roll, 2.76% of the revenue will actually go to the beverage sales and 97.24% of the revenue will go to food sales because it's based on the cost. Okay, if we wanted to get rid of our open food, we just highlight that, press delete, and we remove that ingredient and that's changed those percentages again. So we go to sell, okay, with this particular uh, item, so with recipes, we don't need to copy and paste the name like we did with products. We can just copy them straight down using all the buttons on the right hand side. Again, the pause description is what appears on the actual button for, uh, on the pause. The receipt description is what appears on the customer's receipt. Production description is what appears on the internal receipt printers for production. PDA and kiosk descriptions are what appear on the buttons for PDA and for kiosk customers. We can make a default course for this. So this might be a mains item. And we can again display a stock countdown when this reaches seven. 
we want you to show the number seven in the top corner um, and allow a manual entry of quantity remaining as well. Um, and we might leave that at, uh, we'll change that, we'll leave that at seven. Prevent further sales once this countdown reaches zero. Yes, absolutely. And at this point here, we can change the price. So we'll change it to say $15. That means it's costing us 8.58% at an average cost of $1.17. And if, again, if for example, we wanted a 20% cost on this particular item, we can type in 20 and it gives us a suggested price. So we might sell that item at $6.90. Bossy will always take off the GST. If the tax code up here says GST, then it will take off the GST off the price and it will work the X GST cost divided by the X GST selling price and work out its margin correctly. Okay, we will not need to worry about availability, any custom printing and pricing or barcodes if we are copying from an existing item. So we can just press sell, uh, save, sorry. And that's created our bacon and avocado test roll. We now just go to our POS, go to our pause button setup. We choose the layout that we are using for all of our tills and press edit. It's saying that this button layout is currently in use on the pause. It's advised that you copy this layout rather than edit a live layout. For this particular test purpose, we will just be okay with that. We'll go to uh, kitchen food and we will add our bacon roll. So we can do the use the filter. So I just want to see my food items. I just want to see my kitchen items. And I just want to see the breakfast items. And I believe our bacon avocado test roll, there it is. Okay, we can just put it there. It's now going to be on the on the pause. And if I wanted to remove any other item, our delete product is always up the top. And so we could just highlight delete product and get rid of the bacon and egg if we wanted to. And just press save at that point. Okay, that is how we set up new recipe items. Um, probably best to look at the products uh, YouTube clip that we've set up because that gives you a little bit more detail as to the, how to set up the ingredients from their suppliers, um, how to stock take that particular item as well. So probably best to watch that video first before you do this one. Thank you very much.